Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going to tackle quick time events today, and it's something that you don't usually see inside of UDK. And theoretically, it's pretty pretty simple to set up. Uh, it does get pretty complex at times. Uh, if I just drag this Kismet in, uh, these are the kind of things that we'll be doing today. Uh, so that's the overall sequence. But most of these things you'll have already touched upon before, and it's just about piecing them together in some kind of logical order to create the actual sequence. So I'll just give you a quick run through of what we're actually going to be doing. So previously we were in this area and we tackled console commands inside UDK, kind of creating some interesting uh, gameplay. Uh, so imagine we had already opened these doors and then we can continue forward and then we're walking and we fall down. Uh, we can shoot that. I was tapping F then, and I fall to the floor, throw my gun away and when I jump, I tap F again and climb up. And that's the sequence. So it's a pretty quick sequence, but we've got some interesting things going on there. Uh, and obviously we get teleported there. So one of the first things you will have seen is if we just exit out, uh, you'll have seen us hit this this trigger volume here and our camera took over. One thing to keep in mind is uh, previously when we were doing the tutorials, we were using the UT game, game type and that gave us a default weapon and stuff like that. And if you saw in the video then, uh, I didn't actually have a weapon with me, um, but then when I was falling, I had a weapon. So it, it's something to keep in mind. Uh, the icons that I was drawing on screen only work on a mobile extended game. So if you go to view world properties and game type, I've got my default game type is simple game here and the playing editor one. Uh, originally, like I said, it was UT game, uh, but it just wouldn't support some of the things that we are doing here. So keep in mind, you would need a simple game type for this although I have got a weapon. Um, if you do want to keep the UT game, there's a really good tutorial on online on the Horrence's website under training tutorials. And if you click the HUD and interface creations, he's created a really cool um, set of Kismet actions uh, where you can, you can go into depth and uh, render things onto the screen. So I think this tutorial would help you out a lot, but as you say, it's not my tutorial. So uh, I would definitely direct you in that um, location to get those kind of functionalities inside of Kismet. But for now, I'm using Simple Game. And uh, let's pick it apart now and see what's actually going on. So for this setup, I don't actually have that many actors in, in the scene to actually get it working. Uh, the, main, the main functionality is through Kismet. Uh, I have a camera set up here, and you can find those in Actor Classes, if I just bring my content browser across, uh, Common, uh, camera actor there, you can drag that into the scene. I've put that at uh, roughly the player player eye height. Uh, I've also got this skeletal mesh of the weapon here. Um, if I just find this in the content browser again by right clicking on it and finding content browser, you can find this under the link gun mesh. And I've actually used the first person instead of the third person here. And that is because if I open it up, I have a lot more um, bone names to choose from. Uh, so if you check out all these, um, these are the bone names. And if you open up the other one, it doesn't have as many bone names and I need that for my Kismet functionality. So it's only got two on this one. So I'm using the first person mesh, but I mean, if you are using different weapons and stuff, uh, we just need some kind of socket to fire from. So I've used the first person one there. Uh, I've also got a volume here uh, and that's gonna trigger off the overall event. Uh, so as you can see, it's covering the corridor and that's what kicks off the event. I've also got a piece of concrete here, uh, which is an interp actor if we check it out in the scene. It's just an interp actor. Um, and I've also got a particle emitter here for when we actually um, blow it up and destroy it. And that one is the PFX vehicle death explosion uh, found in um, vehicle explosions there. Um, I think that's about it. Oh yeah, the, this emitter is attached to this. So if uh, this piece of concrete is falling, this emitter is attached to it. Uh, we do that by um, having the base as this. So if you want to lock the properties and then select that and then press the green arrow, that's how you attach stuff. I've also got auto activate turned off, which can be found in emitter particle system component and auto activate because we don't want this to activate on level load up. We want it to activate when we actually want to shoot it. So that's all we have set up at the top. 
uh, on the bottom, the, the camera carries on flying through here. And the only other two actors we've got here is this camera, uh, which is the second part of the sequence where, where you're falling down here and you press F and you can actually jump this gap and carry on playing from there. If you don't bridge this gap, that camera will send you falling to the ground and, and kill you. So you need two possible outcomes. And I'll show you how I place that when we actually get into the Kismet. And then I've also got a note here, which we used before, which can be found in actor classes, uncategorized and notes. I can just type it in that box there. And that's roughly positioned where the camera ends so that the player can continue playing. Uh, so there, that, that's pretty much the scene setup, uh, and we'll actually go into the Kismet now and see how it's all, all done. So I've already got this sequence set up, and that's because there's a lot of matinees going on, and it's kind of hard to line up the keys and get everything looking half decent uh, while you're actually recording the tutorial. So a lot of it is pre-set up, but I'll actually go into it and pick it apart and identify any, any no, uh, actions that we've not come across uh, before. So the first thing is the initial trigger and that was the trigger volume that we put across our corridor and I've also got a play sound here uh, which is the body input and the character robot impact body e explosion cue and that's just basically falling through the floor uh, which is up here. I've just got a, a static mesh going across there um, which is an interpactor again if we see here and we destroy that when we start falling so I'll show you that now. So the first thing I set up was a cinematic start. Um, this this is what you really want to have going on whenever you're um, doing a cinematic uh, just so that the, the player uh, can be in cinematic mode and you, 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 you take control away from him. So with the toggle cinematic uh, we can right click new action toggle uh, toggle cinematic mode there and we need to enable that whenever we want the, the cinematic to start. On the inputs, I mean on the settings sorry, I've got disable input there turned off because we need input for the quick time events if we're tapping the keys um, that we need that functionality still to be available to us so make sure you turn off uh, disable input I'm um, kind of double negative there, we're disabling the turning off the, the input but you kind of get the picture. Uh, the target will be player zero I've also put console command in here and I've typed in God and that just turns God mode on because if you see here when we fall to the ground the player will probably end up dying down that drop so you don't want him to die and um, so I've just turned on God mode just so nothing uh, bad can happen to him. I've also destroyed uh, this floor piece here and that's that's what that is and then I've also unhidden the the Stat, uh, skeletal mesh sorry, and the interp actor and the skeletal mesh is if I don't start rotating things in my scene sorry the skeletal mesh in my scene is this weapon here and I'm also unhiding this block of concrete which is going to start falling on us so that that's the cinematic start that's kind of like the default properties just setting everything up for the cinematic and the next thing we will tackle is the actual falling uh, so that's this matinee here. As I said, I played this sound and then we go straight in to the matinee. I've got two separate matinees here. Technically, they could be in one single matinee, but just in case you wanted to add a bit more functionality to the rubble, uh, that's what this matinee is here. So if I just open this up and show you the matinee, if you just look there you can see this track going down here and that's basically just one movement track um, with the rubble added and that's just falling. You'd add it like you would any other actor, just like you did a door, uh, by making sure it's selected, right clicking, new empty group, naming it with a movement track and just letting it drop down there. So we've covered that in previous tutorials so I don't need to go into depth with that and that's just that matinee there. So it's pretty simple. I've also added uh, active delay here of two seconds because when the player starts dropping, uh, I want that to start dropping two seconds after the player, uh, just so it doesn't catch up with him straight away. So to do that, you can right click on any tab and you can uh, set an active delay by choosing set active delay and that's just right clicking on any output or input tab uh, and that'll ask you to give you a, a delay output and you can 
do a delay. Alternatively, you can hold D and left click and add a delay that way, but that's just a bit easier. So this matinee is a bit more complex. Uh, forgetting about this remote event here just for now, I've got the fall cam. Um, so we've, we've tackled some of these in the cinematics. So I've got a director group there uh, shoot, um, shooting to the fall cam. And the fall cam is just a bunch of keys, uh, which this camera is hooked up to. And that's just our falling sequence. If I scroll through, fall and slide all the way up to this camera, if you see. If you see this camera here, this is where it stops. And this is how I lined up this camera by selecting the last key of the fall cam so we know where it is. And then if you're in the right viewport, if you know your camera is going to be there at that specific point, you can move that second camera actor away. So, so that camera actor is there now. We scroll up to there. And then we can line our second camera up exactly with that. So you, you shouldn't really see a transition in matinees if you've got them lined up well. So that's the fall cam. Um, that's just one continuous track. I guess uh, the next thing to tackle would be the event track. Because if you see here, we've got a kill event here. And that's basically saying, should we kill the player when we get to this point? Because we've got this rubble falling on us here. That's going to be falling towards us and if we've not shot it in time we need to kill the player so if if the player did not press any of the keys for the quick time event this is where we would kill the player you could also just end the matinee there and continue a new matinee uh, so that you could stop that uh, but I've just had a, a kill event there and then we can fire that off and stop the matinee um, with the weapon, uh, it's the exact same as the movement for that. It's just moving the actual gun. Um, so if we scroll back up here, where's the gun at the moment? So the gun's there. It's always following by the camera. If if you were doing a true cinematic, I guess you'd have um, a skeletal character mesh as well with animations hooked up. So this gun uh, wouldn't necessarily be animated. He That'd be hooked up to a socket, but... For this purpose, I've just got it just looking just inside the camera view there, uh, so you can actually see it at all times. And that's just basically falling, falling with the character, and then the character kind of throws it away and it falls to the floor, so the character doesn't have a weapon anymore. Um, you don't need to do that, but it's just an extra group, and you can obviously have animations. Uh, I just right clicked add a new skeletal mesh group if you want the movement and animation or you can add them separately uh, We've covered that previously and then back to the event track uh, We've got an F here and so this indicates when we should start tapping our keys to try and help the player uh, Jump across the gap so the matinee ends there But if we pressed F enough times here, then we'll be able to uh, seamlessly bridge the gap and continue playing the game so that's what that matinee is doing there. So as you can see on the outputs, we've got the kill, which we will, um, I mean, the wires are starting to get a little bit crossed here. So don't worry too much uh, about the overall sequence. Uh, we'll, we will pick it apart, but basically all this kill is doing here is if we follow this line here, it's it's saying, should we kill the player? Um, it, it's op this gate is open by default and we can add a gate by holding G and left clicking and, and that has a gate and basically it is it acts just like a gate. If it's open or closed, if it's closed nothing will come out the other side whereas if it's open stuff will come out the other end. So by default if I just delete this one the gate is open uh, you can set that to open or closed uh, whichever way you, you'd like it but it's, if it's open by default and the player does not press any buttons then if the player gets to kill and he's still not pressed the button it will kill the player by modifying his health um, and giving him a crushed damage uh, amount however much damage you want to give him with a player variable and then it opens another level using the com console command open level one so it'll replay the level I've also got a uh, remote event here. Uh, we can get those by holding R and left clicking. And this is just basically to save on the wires because I've got a wire hooking up all the way back up to here and the kill to the stop of the fall count. So that stops this matinee where it is. As you, as you saw before, it carries on playing after the drop and we don't want that to happen. We want it to stop there at kill. 
So just keeping in mind that um, we the matinee would stop here if the, the player did not shoot that block out of the way. So that's basically all that is. And then if he did shoot it out of the way, then that's where this gate closes. So if you see this close tab here from there, forgetting everything else in the scene, you can see these highlighted areas. Um, that will that'll come down to here. And this is our setup. Uh, I'll follow that line back after I've shown you this setup. Uh, but you need to close the gate afterwards um, so that it doesn't stop the matinee. So this is where we can get into our quick time event here. And this is this section called projectile. So it fires off straight away from when you fall. Uh, and then if you see this long wire here, it closes the gate to stop the player from being killed if successful. Um, so we'll tackle this section here. And this this um, event here is the central part to our QuickTime event. And this allows us to have this kind of functionality. So if you right click new event and then down to uh, input, uh, key button pressed, uh, you can have this, uh, this uh, event here. And it allows us to assign any kind of key and it will detect when this key is pressed. Uh, and so with these settings here, uh, if I just delete this one, uh, I've got it disabled by default because we don't want it to have a load on level starter. We want it to only be activated in a specific situation. So we've got this, this one here and we've disabled it. I've also added an input name uh, by just adding a new item there and I've added F there and that'll detect whenever we press F. Uh, alternatively, you can use the left mouse button uh, and it detects whenever you press the left mouse button or use would be whatever your use key is. I think it's E by default in UDK. But for these quick time events, I'll assign F there. And so, so I've got that. And that's all you really need to have assigned to this. And it'll detect whenever I've pressed um, F. I think this setup would still work if I had pressed going out, but I've just got repeated. Um, and you can find more documentation on the UDN. Um, so that'll be under the, the Kismet references on the actual mo uh, Kismet reference rather than the mobile site. So with, with this uh, button uh, going into a switch, uh, we can right click new action and go to switch and have a switch there. And we can add it to our scene and our link count I've set to six. And this basically says that when, when F is pressed six times, then we can have something firing off it. And so for the first five times, I've got a play sound, uh, which is a rocket launcher, uh, RL rocket loaded Q. Uh, and that is um, just like a dulled sound of like a weapon jamming up. Uh, that's what I'm using it for. So while we're falling, our weapon isn't actually firing. So we have to keep uh, pressing F to get it working. Uh, and so that's what that kind of represents there. And then on the sixth switch, I have whatever firing out that I need to fire out. So as I said, it was disabled by default. And so when we hit this trigger, we need a way to enable it. So I've just got a normal toggle there, which is just holding T and left mouse clicking, turn on, and then we want to turn on the event. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the first five switches, I just that and uh, dulled out sound. And then the sixth is where we can actually fire our weapon. So we've got this hooked up Firstly to the toggle, uh, and that's turning on the emitter, and that's the emitter that's falling with this piece of concrete, and that, that's just the explosion uh, once we've done it. And we also want to hide that big piece of concrete. So we tackled those two types of toggles before, so that's not nothing new, uh, and that's just getting rid of the, the objects. The main thing we want to focus on here is this uh, actor factory here, which is a projectile factory. And we can find this by uh, left click, uh, right clicking, sorry, new action, actor, and projectile factory. And uh, a good tutorial on using these is actually the Jazzy Jack Rabbit uh, iOS uh, video tutorial online. So if you can if you can watch that, it'll give you a better understanding of the projectile factory. Or alternatively, you can find it on the UDN. And what this is doing is it's spawning a projectile from our gun. So if we look at our gun up here. This is our weapon. And the reason why I picked it before is because it has all these socket names. So if I find it in the content browser and load it up, we have all these socket names to choose from. And if I just zoom into it uh, and towards the bottom, we have these sockets towards uh, the barrel of the, I guess you call it the barrel of the weapon. 
uh, and this is where we can fire a projectile from and we can send it in a certain direction or however you want to do it. So I think I used LG underscore flash for this one. So if you just note uh, whichever bone is on your skeletal mesh uh, to spawn from and then in the projectile factory under bone name you can type in LG underscore flash. Uh, the template I've got for the muzzle flash um, is just uh, a particle system that can be found inside of UDK. You can fi you can use any of these particle systems, but that just fire out, fires out of the muzzle of the weapon there. Um, other settings to keep in mind uh, would be uh, under factory, we want to drop the left mouse button. So in other active factories, you, you would have picked like UT active factory AI on the active factories. Uh, for this one, in this example, I'm going to use an archetype, and that's that. That was what was found in the Jazzy Jack Rabbit, Jazzy Jack Rabbit tutorial. Sorry, and uh, it's it's a it's a good one to go off. So if if you guys check that out, like I said, uh, it'll give you all these kind of uh, settings to choose from. The one thing that you've got to keep in mind is that uh, the Jazzy Jack Rabbit uses these archetypes, um, which can be found inside of. Um, UDK in the mobile section. So if you just let me get a bit of space here. If you go to all types and archetypes, it'll come up with archetypes here, which you can use. Uh, you can either use one of these, but um, it does have settings if you double click it that you can change here. Uh, the other thing you can do though is something that is similar. Uh, you got to you can pick one and right click and create a copy and if you create a copy inside of your custom package uh, I think mine is the prototype content and you call it projectile blaster or three or something like that Then you won't be actually editing any of these archetypes here. You could put it into your own custom package um, Here so I've co created a copy called blaster three uh, and I've saved the package and if you double click on it, you can change a few settings here You can change the spawn sound if you feel like um, You know it does it creates um, too much of a, a light height feel but if you have all these custom sounds uh, Inside your package you can assign these pretty easily and you can change things like the speed and the max speed that it fires out and It just gives you a, a, a lot of kind of flexibility with the kind of customization of your projectile so all I did was create a copy from the mobile mobile one and saved it to my own package. That way when I altered any sound effects it wouldn't change in the actual game. For example, if I was using it in Jazzy Jack Rabbit, I wouldn't all of a sudden have rocket launcher sounds. So that's a good way to customize an archetype. Once you've got your archetype, make sure you save your package and then you can plug it into there in the archetype actor. Uh, and so that will fire our custom archetype. And you don't really need to change much else in there. As long as you've got your bone name and your archetype, Whatever you've got spawning will fire straight off of this weapon from that muzzle in a in a desired direction. Uh, one thing you need on the projectile factory is a spawn point, and that would be your weapon here. So just have your weapon selected, right click on spawn point, and get the new object by using skeletal mesh. And now it, the projectile will have somewhere to spawn from. So this this section in recap here, uh, when we press F repeatedly, we press it six times and then it spawns a projectile, fires, uh, causes the explosion on the concrete uh, and allows us to continue through. Uh, and it also closes the gate up here on our kill player. So if we've already caused the concrete explosion to explode, sorry, uh, then we can continue playing and the matinee will continue to run while you're sliding down that slope. So now that we have our firing behavior handled, uh, we can go into the on-screen indications and that was that flashing exclamation mark that you saw uh, telling us to you know, get the weapon unjammed and shoot the, shoot the block before uh, it crushes us. So the main things you want to look out for here, if we just take this aside, that's, that can stay out for now. Um, you've got the spawn projectile going here and that's from the finished. Uh, we're going to a closed gate again. And so that's just stopping this sequence from looping. And the way the sequence starts looping is from this initial trigger here. So we got this firing off all the way down to here. And that's what kicks off this event. 
So initially we got a toggle, which is turn on, and that's just turning on this bull. And bulls can, in a way, you can turn them on and turn them off. Uh, the, the way they would do that is go from true to false. So I think turn off is false and turn on is true. Uh, so keep that in mind, you can toggle bulls. And then it, the main thing we're looking at is these two events here. And if you right click, got a new event, HUD, you can find both of them here. Uh, we've got two different setups, so I'll tackle the draw image first and the draw text afterwards. And the main thing about this is the texture. And I've found a UDK texture called Reload, if I just search it out here. It's in the GFX, and that is in the UT UDK HUD, sorry. and that's just that Reload icon there. Uh, so I've got that drawn to the screen. You can also change the display location. Uh, play around with all these settings here that I'm telling you about. Uh, these work for me, but they may not work for you. Uh, it's a good base to go off, and then you can keep tweaking them and kind of seeing what suits you. So the display location is uh, though these three I can, I, um, inputs here, sorry. Uh, display texture, I've got 512, 512, 128, 128, and 64, and 64. And the way I got those was literally just by playing around. If you check out the UDN here on the documentation mobile Kismet reference, uh, you can see what each of these does. And it's slightly vague. You can kind of just figure out by trial and error what each one is doing. Um, but as far as I'm aware, the bottom two properties here, uh, the size of the image. So if this was 128, maybe there'd be two images instead of one. And then the other ones are like resolutions and pixels and stuff like that. The main thing to keep in mind is logic texture. Use these default properties for now and then just play around with what each of them does and make sure you have is active turned on and that'll be on by default. I've also changed the display color to red. I think it overrides the actual texture. So that, that seems to work for me. Uh, and the only thing else is to hook up active to this bool here that we're toggling. So basically this bool, when it turns on, it'll make this draw image active. And then if we turn it off, it'll make it unactive. Keep in mind, these draw texts and the draw image, the outputs don't actually fire anything, so you don't need anything going off there. It's purely is active that you're controlling. So the next set, bit of the setup here, I've got a menu um, sound here, a UT3 menu checkbox deselect, and that's just like a, a bleeping type sound. So when this is going on and off, this is bleeping. And the way we make it go on and off is by using a delay from the out of 0.2 seconds, it goes into a gate, and if the gate is open, it goes out back to toggle. So we're toggling this, and every time it goes through, it keeps toggling this on and off, on and off, on and off. Uh, the way we stop that is once the projectile is spawned, uh, we send that to close, and then that'll turn everything off and stop it from flashing. So as soon as we've shot the projectile and destroyed this piece of concrete, that will stop flashing. This little section down here is a bool uh, set variable. So you can find that in new action, um, object property, is it set property somewhere? Set variable, sorry, uh, bool. And the value should be false and just hook the target up to this false. And that way, even if it's, if we close this and it was true by default, then this would stay on the entire time. So we just wanna make sure it's turned off after the sequence is ended by setting the bool to false and so it doesn't come back on. So there's a lot of wires there, but it's it's not too complicated. Uh, that's just drawing an image on the screen, um, flickering it on and off, and then turning it off once we've spawned the projectile and destroyed the piece of concrete. So that's that bit there. So now that we've got that first uh, behavior set up, I'll just go back into the cinematic and play it and so you can kind of see what was going on now. So I'm r running up to where the trigger volume is. As soon as I hit this trigger volume, I'll start falling. I'll have to tap F six times. Uh, the the on-screen indicator will be flashing. Once I've hit the sixth time, my weapon will fire and cause the emitter to turn on and the block to disappear and hopefully the matinee will continue. So let's try that out. So I hit it six times, shoot it, carry on falling. And so that seems to work for now. So that's all this first um, 
section of Kismet was. Uh, we've had the initial uh, event fire off. We've started the cinematic so we can fall and not get killed. And so the player only has input, not movement. Uh, we've set off the projectile so that if we hit the, the switch six times, then we'll fire that projectile to destroy uh, the piece of concrete that's falling on us. If we don't press this in time, then the matinee will end and kill the player. And also we've got this on-screen indication here of this toggling of the draw image. So once we get to the bottom of the, the slope, we start sliding down the other way and we need to bridge the gap. So that's where we come back to this matinee here and that's where this F starts firing off. So if we just load up our matinee and if you see F here, this is where we can start pressing F to jump the gap. If we don't, if we don't press F enough times, uh, that camera will take over here and send us down. If we do, the camera will jump us over. So we have two different matinees of the same camera. So just checking this sequence out now. So from F, what we're doing, we're turning on the jump and that's this is pretty much similar to the same setup we had. We have it disabled by default. Uh, we have it turning on so we can start pressing this one. And we've got F uh, disabled there, obviously. And we've got a switch here. Uh, just for debugging, I've got a switch at one, but you can have the switch at six or anything like that. So what is going on here? Uh, we've got uh, this set of on-screen indicators here um, flying out from the F output. So this is telling us to toggle F. And instead of the draw image, we've got the draw text here. So the exact same setup with the toggle, the delay, the bool setting it to false, uh, all that. Uh, but the only thing that's changed here is we've got a draw text instead of the draw image here now. So again, hooking up active into this bool. And the things we want to tackle here are the display font. So if we go into our content browser, we can search in UI for fonts and pull up any fonts we have. Alternatively, we can go straight to the top of UDK game and go to fonts and select fonts. Alternatively, if you want a custom font, you can right click here and I think it's new multi font imported from true type. So if we click on that and grouping, we can call it fonts, uh, name font or one. Uh, you can import it from the true type and you can choose a font and you can choose any of these fonts that are installed with um, Windows. And so whichever font you want to install, uh, you can choose, you can change the settings and hit OK. And then that's a sample one. And you don't really need to change too many of the other settings down here. There is documentation on the UDN for things that you, you, you can be changing in there. Uh, but just search out important fonts and you'll be able to do that. For my example though, I've just used um, a display font there on the hood. Uh, I've, set, I've kept the color at white, but you can change it to black, blue, green, whatever you want. Uh, I've got the display location, 1024, 1024, 1300. Display text is F. So I've got F flashing on the screen. So that'll indicate to the player to press F. Uh, I've also got is active set to true. Uh, I've not got anything else there. So that, that's basically the toggle that we had before, but flashing up F on the screen. Um, however you set your game up with quick time events and stuff like that, the player should already know what button they tap in. Say on like PlayStation games, it flashes up with circle, 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 so you tap circle, whichever that is. Uh, I know for the previous example, we used an image here. And how would the player know how to hit F to get rid of the image? Uh, they're kind of things that you need to tackle in your game, but I'm just showing you the two different options. And then also, if if the player hits the switch in time, hits F, then we also set this bool to false. And so the events fire off, but this also turns off the screen. So we've got F here, we turn that on, and say this was link four, for example, if we hit F four times, then these two events would fire off here. Uh, forgetting these up here, these are the two main ones that we're looking at. So if this works, we've got two matinees here, the fall cam and the jump cam. The fall cam happens if you don't press F in time, the player will fall off the side and get killed. So from the completed of this matinee here, if this completes and we don't press F in time, 
play the fall camp and that will kill the player. If the player presses F in time, stop this fall cam. So stop that matinee from playing and also play this one. And this one, if I double click it, is the jump cam. So looking at this, this is where we jump across and kind of slip and climb up. There we go. So that's pretty easy. That's it's either it's like either or. Should I play this matinee or this matinee? I guess you could have bulls or gates in here, whatever's easier. Uh, instead of this setup, but basically you're just picking between the two matinees which ones to play. So that's the jump cam, and then once the jump cam is completed, then you have a teleport here, which can be found new action actor teleport, and you target the player. The destination is this note on the other side, which we added before, and then you need to disable cinematic mode, not enable this time, disable. A target will be the player again and console command god so we're not in god mode anymore we turn that off uh, so that bit's pretty easy easy to set up um, and that's all we've got running off there this allows you to do uh, multiple different variations and say we jumped across here and we were slipping down there we could have another another quick time event tapping F to try and pull ourselves up and, and you can just have constant action going through your game it's up to you where to have the quick time events just remember you need something firing off the, the matinee and then you'll also need to use this key pressed um, here and you can assign whichever letter you want just make sure the player knows which letter they're pressing in this case we had this draw text and we could keep toggling that but remember it only works with the simple game type so if you are using UT game you could use Horence's tutorial example. Uh, the spawn projectile is something new that we added here. And uh, also, something to keep in mind would be to add a bit more difficulty, you could have a random switch. So this would add um, a, a kind of step up in difficulty to the game. If you go to switch, random switch, you could actually change it so that the player doesn't think, oh, I have to press F 15 times in order to get it to work. If you want like true panic in the game or true sense of emergency you could have this switch up to six and then say we right click cut here and paste on link four and then from link six we go to in just make sure on the random you've got looping so that if if it doesn't fire first off you can keep looping until you press four so this is purely down to chance whether you get it in time you wouldn't want too many link counts on this random one because the player might die unfairly but if you wanted them to press the switch maybe 15 times and then go into a, a, a random element maybe they press it one or four or five uh, whichever that may be the the links kind of fire off randomly so that kind of adds a nice little surprising element uh, to the game so that'd be one way to add difficulty and of course uh, to pull in all of these kind of kismet actions here, you would want custom animations and sound effects and stuff happening around you and explosions going off to really immerse the player. But as long as you have this key button pressed here and you use it in kind of cool ways, uh, you can get some really cool cool outcomes. So just have a play around. Uh, the actual kismet looks a bit complex at start, but when you start picking it apart, it's the same things kind of duplicated. Uh, over again. Uh, I think one thing that I didn't touch up on there was the kill and that stops the matinee and that's just from this gate here. Um, but apart from that, yeah, just have a play around. Uh, it's something interesting to prototype inside of UDK having quick time events. Uh, this came about when I was throwing ideas around with uh, a student uh, called Robin. So he kind of gets a little bit of credit for thinking of this scenario. But just think about some cool outcomes and have a play around. So to give a proof of concept, I thought I'd just play through the level and, and not press any buttons and just show you uh, what the outcome would be. So if we fall here and it's flashing and the piece of concrete is falling, we've not pressed anything so the player gets killed. Uh, it stops the matinee, uh, we can't actually move around and that's because playing editor doesn't load console commands for opening levels. So if you imagine now the level would be loading, so that works there. So now we'll play this sequence and we'll complete the first quick time event by hitting F to shoot the block and then we won't press F the second time so that we fall down the hole and uh, get killed. So we'll hit F there 
uh, we've shot that, and then we land, we sigh, we throw our gun away, we won't hit F, and then we'll fall to the ground, and then the screen fades to black. As you can see, the F is still on our screen, so we need to get find a way to get rid of that, uh, debug it out, uh, and it seems that our bool only gets turned to false when we've actually hit um, F, and that would be fine if we actually pressed F, but what happens when we don't press F? So I think instead of on that link, we should have uh, break this link and have it set for up to completed so that if the actual matinee completes, then we'll turn that off. And so either way, whether we jumped or we didn't, uh, that should turn it off. And, and that's just a proof of concept to show it working. Thanks for watching.